just one left. And I think that was the longest one. We'll find out. Okay, the auto crossbow isn't as strong as it used to be. But that's fine. I probably don't need to... I need to take her off of... Casting spells? Eh, we'll find out. Uh, what do I think of seven? Okay, good. Yeah, there's a couple things I want to catch back up on. Um since we're in prime talking time now that we're doing combat. Uh, Seven, I grew up, I played Seven at release. I am uh, relatively old, uh, definitely in comparison to most of Twitch uh, age groups. So I was, uh, I was there when the old magics were written. Um, so it does have a nostalgia, um, so it does have nostalgia for me. I do like the game. Uh, playing through it recently, I can definitely see that there are some problematic aspects of it, but not necessarily as bad. But the story was definitely more weird and convoluted than I remembered it being. Um, and the ending could have been better. Uh, I think that was the one thing, like I ended up taking a small hiatus from streaming for like a couple weeks and then we came back to finish the the final boss and then uh, a couple friends were kind of just raging like that's how it ends because in my head it ends differently but i consume a lot of media around it as well like i've played crisis core i played dirge of cerberus um i watched uh Advent Children and some other stuff, so there was a lot more sort of lore filled in my head. Uh, so whenever I saw the ending too, I was like, "Ooh, yeah, that it, it definitely kind of it could have been more full." It did feel a little bit kind of uh empty, not not empty, but like a uh, like there could have just been more to the ending. To sort of flesh out some things and it probably could have been better that way but in the but in all all in all uh i enjoyed it even in the past playthrough uh that we just did oh more dialogue please i can ex explain get out of here now or you'll regret it okay i guess we're leaving Let's not get hasty here. I'm King Edstar of Figaro. Liar! My goodness. And that, my friends, is why we can't. I can't stand men. It's like they don't even have ears. I'm sorry, it's all my fault. Oh, the, uh, Sephiroth was saying that's awesome that I was there at launch. Yeah, it was, uh, I was. I think I was in middle school at the time, so I was able to actually afford the game relatively close to launch uh, through chores and babysitting and other things uh, and birthday money, that sort of stuff that you do when you're just trying to get cool things as a kid. Uh, but yeah, so... And yeah, it's uh, not a bad game. It isn't perfect, but it's not bad. I mean, for the time, there was a lot of really cool stuff, like the whole uh, motorcycle cart thing and all the minigames and stuff sort of built into it. Like, at the time, minigames were not prevalent everywhere, or at least not as far as uh, my experience had been. So, like, there was definitely some really cool moments. Um... And, uh, oh, you're saying it's originally supposed to end with a cliffhanger speculation that Holy ended up killing humanity. I wasn't aware if that's where it was going. Um, 
Yeah, because I think the ending doesn't show any people alive. It shows that the, uh, that Red 13's tribe had a litter of puppies or something, and, uh, that animals and stuff survived, but yeah, I don't think it shows any humans alive, so there is a good, uh, I suppose that is a good amount of speculation on what could have happened. Um... And yeah, oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. So, whenever I was playing Final Fantasy VII... This isn't the... I'm not sure if this is the right way. Uh, when I was playing Final Fantasy VII, um, a guy on Twitter named Sega Chief, um, that is part of the speedrunning community, I believe, uh, had started making a randomizer for Final Fantasy VII, and our playthrough was just absolutely bonkers. Uh, because of that. Like, all the story and stuff stayed the same, but basically combat had a really new feel to it just because everything was ridiculous and not necessarily... Enemies in weird spots, materia, you shouldn't have. Like, I think I had a... Like, my only damage spell I had for the first uh, hour of the game was uh, Zero Bahamut. So we, so if I wanted to win fights, we basically just had to spam Zero Bahamut nonstop, and it was basically the, a cutscene simulator, <laughs> uh, which was absolutely ridiculous. Uh, so basically, yeah, we just had dragon cutscenes for days. It took forever to get further in to get more materia, so we didn't have to deal with that, and just the whole the the whole thing was. It was a train wreck, but in a fun and interesting way. Um, I only had a couple soft locks, or I guess, uh, bugs, uh, that were caused by the thing, and I think most of them are ir ironed out by now. But yeah, uh, so as far as, uh, like, gameplay and stuff, that was fun. Um, and have I played, uh, 7R yet? Yes, I, uh, have beat... 7... I have beat the remake. I absolutely adored it, and it was so good. I enjoyed almost everything about it. I have thoughts on how the ending happens. Uh, more from a gameplay perspective than from a story perspective, I guess. Uh, but yeah, like... There's definitely, like, the first 40 hours of the game, I thought, were really good and basically perfect as far as I was concerned. I didn't start getting either disillusioned or maybe just, uh, becoming too familiar with the game or bored or anything like that until, uh way into late game, like it was only the last couple of hours where I started nitpicking things and kind of being, uh, pedantic or judgmental about decisions. But yeah, so, uh, 7R, fabulous. Um, I haven't gone back to beat anything on hard mode yet. I'm not sure if I want to save that for future me. Uh, I went back and I think I beat the first level on hard. Uh, and then, uh, that was where I called it quitsies on it, just so that I could save, uh, the experience so I could have more fun at some other time. Despite all of our recent advances in technology, the outside world remains full of monsters we know little about. Here we provide advice to travelers brave enough to face its many dangers. Adventuring school? It's just a school? Monster in a box! Son of a bitch. Okay. Thought it was gonna be super hard like the last one was.
Seven uh, R is your current favorite uh, game over the OG of Seven. Uh, and you're working on hard mode right right now yourself. Uh, made, making it through to chapter sixteen. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, because like uh, not being able to heal and the other limitations probably make it pretty difficult. I didn't get far enough in to see how difficult it made it. But I definitely, I could see that being a challenge. And, uh, a lot of people agree with, uh, what I'm saying about the ending. Uh, because of wild fan speculation. Valuables are sometimes hidden in pots like this one. I guess, thank you. Have you heard about relics? Variety of abilities. Sprint shoes, W walking speed, weapons of both hands. Cool, 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 cool. Dragon boots allow you to perform jumps. Yeah, we've got relics. Oh, and that guy's gonna block my way. Here we go. What do you got for me? Despite all of our recent advances in technology, the outside world... Yeah, you told me that. Here we provide advice to travelers brave enough to face those dangers. You actually love the ending because it's not supposed to be an ending, or answer questions is to leave us wondering and excited for parts to come. Yes, I really liked the way the ending happened from a story perspective. It kind of shows, like, they filled, like, getting towards the end, they showed stuff with Zack, uh, and then the way it just totally shifts and how things end up sort of working out uh, with the ending leaves a lot of opportunities for the fact, like, going forward, what they do with the rest of the world. There's, uh, like, it definitely left open a bunch of questions, like, uh, are they going to stick closer to, are they, are they gonna stick close to the original? Because uh, a lot of going through Midgar and stuff was very much following the formula of the original, but they definitely improved every aspect uh, of it while still staying true. But uh, with the way the ending happened, there's a lot of opportunities and options for them to change stuff, be different. Or, like, hopefully, um, some of the things, like, I'd like to see out of the 7 remake is completely, like, small little chunk side stories that don't even necessarily involve the main group. Because there's a bunch of really cool settings and characters and stuff that you could do, uh, like, totally bespoke stories around them without, uh really following the game, like if you hadn't touched... Because there's a bunch of lore, and there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in the setting. Um, exploring previously, uh, before, like, even doing prequel stories, or, uh, backstories, and things like that, that... Or even just uh, introducing new characters and having them have their own stories that don't even tie necessarily into uh, the main story is something I'd be totally cool with. Um. Would be cool if Sephiroth turns out to be a good guy. There is entirely the possibility, because, I mean, they're not fully... Like, there's a possibility that they change anything, so... I mean, there's always that possibility. Okay, we can't go in there. Oops, I didn't mean to walk all the way up there again. Speaking of which... 
You'd love to be able to read various lore books and stuff in the Shinra Mansion. Uh, players learn so players can learn more about uh, what Sephiroth did. Yeah, because if like the rumors are true that they want the seven remake to kind of be an extended universe for storytelling, uh, like uh, having even having those be more fleshed out, like you don't have to even just read them, being able to play a lot of Sephiroth's backstory, a lot of stuff that is missing that you only kind of get secondhand. Uh, through, uh, other means. Uh, there's a lot of opportunity in that respect. That you can, they could def they could have their own, like, an own standalone Sephiroth game. It wouldn't be... impossible. And it depends on how much they want to reuse the setting in the engine, and they're trying. Depends on how much they're trying to build up the uh, the whole world. You are the returners. Hello. Okay. Bye. Yeah, like, I didn't really... I mean, I suppose the mechanics weren't bad for Dirge of Cerberus. But the fact that, uh, Vincent basically had his own game is really cool in its own way. Alright, I'm running out of things to do. It must be somewhere in that adventure school. Oh, there we go. When Locke first rescued me, we came out of the mines right around here. He fiddled with something. And then poof. Yes, he told me. Twist these stones like so. Oh, there we go. It's been so long since uh, we, I played this. I would never have remembered that. That was just accidental. Figured it out <laughs> just in time. Yeah, and that was the other like I like RPGs, but uh this is actually the first time I'm playing six. But also on the other hand, like sometimes not knowing where to go and wandering around starts to get a little old. So like I I definitely don't mind like I've looked up some stuff. Um, I don't think it was this. I think I actually ended up looking up a few things in 7. Just because the amount I've played 7, I usually play through Midgar the most. And I also... Oh, I was not paying attention to whatever the hell that just did. But uh, the most that I played 7 recently uh, was the Steam version and... I was working on my time for doing the speed run, and it's like 90% of the speed run is just getting out of Midgar and then 
using some tech to completely break the game in base it's a, basically another credit warp. You warp to the final boss, more or less. What place? There's a room in here. They used to test applications to the city guard. We should be fine as long as we follow the light. If we make a mistake, lights will surround us. Then we'll have to tag the glimmering orange light to proceed. That didn't work. Yeah, pre-7 is kind of gnarly. Yeah, like, this is the, uh, I guess, uh, modernization remake, because it's the one on Steam. Yeah, old style RPGs, you gotta do a lot of talking to random people and wandering and remembering stuff. Uh, yeah, so this actually has, uh, since it's the remake, I think it's the same as the mobile version. Okay, let me pay attention. Uh, it's the same as the mobile version which has added um, quality of life stuff. Uh, such as on the world map, usually it tells you where to go by uh, highlighting the town that you're supposed to go to. Uh, and at least knowing which direction I need to walk is extremely helpful, because quite often I just don't feel like wandering around the world map. So, but yeah, so maybe a bit spoiled, even though, yeah. But just having those little indicators and stuff has probably been very helpful and saved a bunch of time. Uh, just so I know where I'm going. But yeah, if I just spend too much time walking around in a circle, I am not above just looking it up. There's a certain point where I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Can we sleep here? There's a bunch of random beds you can and can't sleep in. <laughs> Yeah, this is basically the mobile port, and it has quality of life stuff. Uh, you played it on the GBA and nearly beat it on the PS1. I believe I have several of the anthologies that were released over time, so I probably have several discs of six or uh, releases on different platforms as well but they don't have these quality of life updates, so it was probably better I chose this one, which was mostly out of laziness, because my capture card was not actually capturing the PS1 correctly. We were actually supposed to play Tactics uh, instead of this, but I couldn't get that up and running because my cables whack in some way, and I have to fix that before we can play uh, off of the PS1. Arvis! How do things stand here in Narsh? Same as always, the town's neutral. I've tried to convince them to side with the Returners, but it is no use. Of course, maybe with you and the King of Figaro here. How are the townspeople? Everyone's being a little on edge since the Esper was discovered. Yeah, rip tactics. Rip tactics. And... 
the only things it's been released on, it has very few releases, which made it worse. Like, I have Tactics on my PS Vita, but I would either have to get my PS Vita modded so I can run, uh, run it on a capture card, or, uh, what was it, the Vita TV or something like that? Get that instead so I can then download and play it on there. But that would be also money uh, to spend just for a very specific thing. Although I did, and but I do, I did play a lot of it whenever I played the Vita more, but I've kind of stopped playing it all that much just cause, eh, it lost its, lost its charm. Well, the townspeople are still quite curious about it as well. If we approach them in the right way, there's a good chance they'll agree to let her see it. That Esper is either going to save us or dig us an early grave. You've played 1 through 4, 6, 7, 10, 13, 14, and 15. The three groups have arrived in Narsh, and now a decisive battle is about to unfold. Um, I'm playing six. Uh, I've beat seven, eight. I don't think I beat nine, but I still have a copy. Uh, I think I also bought the PS4 remake with the uh, 3x speed and stuff that they released. Uh, I beat ten. Uh, I don't remember if I, I don't think I've beat Tactics either. I start a lot of games and I don't finish them. Uh, I have a very big problem of not finishing games. Uh, I, so the funny story on that is, uh, Final Fantasy X. I played to a certain point and then I just got bored and I gave up. And then a friend a few years later, uh, was like, I'm gonna play through ten. Uh, and I hooked my, uh, I, like, brought a TV over and hooked my PlayStation up alongside theirs, and we're going to just kind of dick around and play together and hang out, uh, for, like, a weekend. I load it up, and then I just start wandering around and stuff. And, like, towards the end of the weekend, he got to where I was, so then, like, we could continue. And I was, I literally gave up playing the game at the last save point, not knowing it was the last save point, but I was just like, I'm done. Like I hadn't actually gone farther and seen the final boss and known it was the final boss and maybe I should just finish the game. But no, I just uh, made the save and either forgot about it, never came back to it uh, or whatever reason <laughs> at the final boss. And he's just like, wow, this whole, this whole weekend, You've been li literally just... What have you been doing? <laughs> I understand what you're saying, but... You're asking us to spill our blood for you. That's not what we asked. What you ask is the same. Um... 1, 2, and 6 were on GBA. Played some on DS, uh, hand, you d hand me down PS1, Nintendo on PS2. Yeah. I think, uh, so yeah, uh, my list was. Okay, I also didn't finish 12. I played a ton of 11. Uh, when that was more recent and popular. I own in a. Ri a release copy of 14 with the big old honkin uh, like collector's edition box. Uh, played it for a little bit, but not a whole lot. I haven't played anything anywhere near recent. Uh, 15 I didn't beat, but I had problems with that game. Now that it's fixed and working, it's probably worth playing and beating, so I'll probably revisit that. Uh, 13, I actually beat, again, it was a really, like, I liked everything up until the final boss, more or less. I always have issues with their final boss design. I didn't play any of the offshoots, 13-2 and all that sort of stuff, or, and 10-2. 
Yeah. And... Seven Remake. Something like that. Bannon. We're asking you to spill your blood. Emperor Gustahal is racing to acquire even greater Magitek power. That's the reason he wants the Esper that was discovered here. If we allow the Empire to continue amassing weapons of Magitek destruction, history's greatest mistake will be repeated. The War of the Magi. The legendary conflict that laid waste to the world. You're saying it could happen again? I had thought humans to be wiser creatures. Headstar! Sad boy, you're alright. Who have you brought along? I am Dabu D, a warrior of the kingdom of Doma. Ooh woo, got him. All these dudes are so terrible, I love them. The Empire killed everyone in Doma down to the last child. Kefka poisoned them. You found 13 to be hella fun, you just couldn't follow the story to save your life. On revisiting 7? Eh? It was it comparably easy to follow. <laughs> There's actually quite a bit in 7 that's uh, optional. And if you skip a bunch of that, it's definitely a lot harder to sort of follow what's going on. Uh, yeah. So, but yeah, I thought 13 was actually pretty good. But the way I played it was weird. I guess the way I had my uh, party composition uh, didn't quite fit in with their design for the final boss. And I really... I struggled hard on the final boss uh, until I changed up the my I had to change up the the playstyle that I literally like played the entire game with uh, and had to learn how to like change up my playstyle for the final boss but it worked for everything else if I remember correctly I just don't trust healers in games so I basically run Medic as the main character and just kind of let the uh, the NPCs fight each other and just keep them healed up. Um, and that is not the strategy. Barbaric. Elder. But that was because Domo was collaborating with the Returners. As long as we remain neutral, we have nothing to fear from the Empire. Think again. Lock. The Empire is poisoned to attack Narsh, or poised to attack Narsh as we speak. What? Lock, where did you manage to get your hands on information like that? Moon Chicken here was one of the Empire's general. Oh. So it's her. I thought she looked familiar. Sir Gotham, step aside. The infamous General Moon Chicken. The woman single-handedly responsible for the decimation of Miranda. Stand and meet thy judgment, Imperial. Mm? <gasps> Lamau, you completely understand not trusting the healer AI, but yeah. Uh, he had to double and triple healer, healer paradigm as well as you went through the game. Yeah, and then like the only way I beat the final boss was basically uh, going full DPS because apparently after watching speedruns uh, years later, I've found out because there's a Final Fantasy uh, speedrun marathon that happens once or twice a year by a group that does charity work. Uh, RPG Limit Break. Um, like they were talking about the final boss, and apparently the final boss almost, like it has built into its algorithm to target the healer with its instant death spells uh, more often than anyone else. 
So whenever your main party member dies, you just instantly game over. So if you run a medic in the final boss, you have a very high likelihood of being targeted by that and it working uh, at least one of the several times it chooses to do so. Uh, expe and having your main party leader instant death into game over. Uh, yeah, that's what I ran into several times and eventually they had to change it up and just DPS it down. So... My problem with 13 is basically just that <laughs> design decision. Moon Chicken has promised to join the Returners. She's fighting on our side now. Be that as it may, I promised I'd protect her and I won't give up a woman I've sworn to protect. <laughs> oh, that's horrifying. Oh, it was infuriating, that's for sure. But at least I know it was his final boss, and I am stubborn as hell, so I persevered eventually. Locke, you still haven't gotten over that, have you? I was also an Imperial soldier. What? The Empire is evil, but that doesn't mean that all of its citizens are. I'm going to have to defer to my brother on this one. The Empire is here. We're under attack! I don't care what you have to do. Just get me that Esper. Not even, it isn't even a voice I would use for him, anyway. Not that my voice has changed all that much. Kefka, sir! What about the civilians? What about them? Kill them all! But Sir Narja is a neutral city. Not anymore! Read my lips. Mercy is for wimps. There's a reason a pose rhymes with dispose. If, you get in your, if they get in your way, kill them. March! It seems the choice has been made for us. Let's make ready for war. They're here for the Esper. We moved it up into the cliffs above the valley. Then that's where we'll make our stand. Don't fall for him now, thinking he will protect you. Thanks for your concern, but I'm a soldier. Not some love, so much for the next. I don't read fast enough. Tara, who'd have thought we'd meet again like this? You can use magic too, can't you? But it's different from mine. I was raised to be an Imperial Magitech Knight. When I was still very young, I was artificially infused with magic. Is it possible for you to love other people? Hmm? Are you mocking me? Did I ever play Dissidia? I don't think so. I think I meant to, but I never got into it. Uh, Isidia is the fighting game, right? Do not think even for a moment that I trust thee. Fine, use your own eyes and see for yourself which side I'm on.